Good morning children. Let us continue with the second part of Sound of Music which is a chapter in Standard 9's Beehive Textbook. This chapter Sound of Music part 2 deals with the Shehenai of Bismillah Khan. So let's have a quick reading of the important points of the lesson. The word Shehenai originated from a shrill instrument known as the Pungi. According to the story, Emperor Aurangzeb banned the playing of Pungi due to its shrill sound. A barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the Pungi. The barber played the instrument before royalty and everyone was impressed. Since it was first played in the Shah's chambers and was played by a Nai, that is a barber, the instrument was named the Shehenai. The sound of Shehenai began to be considered auspicious and for this reason it is still played in temples and weddings. The credit for bringing this instrument onto the classical stage goes to Ustad Bismillah Khan. Ustad Bismillah Khan belonged to a well-known family of musicians from Bihar. Bismillah's paternal ancestors were great Shehenai players. As a young boy, Bismillah would watch his uncles practice the Shehenai with fascination. The young Bismillah would sing songs at a nearby temple and earn laddus in return. Bismillah would accompany his uncle Ali Baks to the Vishnu temple and watch him playing. Slowly, he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day. Not only did he practice but also invented ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shehenai. At the age of 14, Bismillah accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad Music Conference. The audience included Ustad Faiz Khan, one of the greatest vocalists of the century. After the recital, Ustad Faiz Khan advised Bismillah to work hard. With the opening of the All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938 came Bismillah's big break. When India gained independence, on 15 August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with his Shehnai. He poured his heart into Rag Kafi from the Red Fort. Later, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru would greet the nation with his historic speech, Trust with Destiny. From then onwards, Bismillah travelled around the world, delighting the audience with his Shehenai music. King Zahir Shah of Afghanistan was so fascinated by Bismillah's music that he gave him priceless Persian carpets. Film director Vijay Bhatt was so impressed after hearing Bismillah play at a festival that he named a film after the instrument called Goonj Uti Shehenai. Bismillah was also the first Indian to perform at Lincoln Center Hall in USA. He also performed in the World Exposition in Montreal in the Cannes Art Festival and in the Osaka Trade Fair. Bismillah 
also had an auditorium named after him in Tehran called the Tahir Mosiki Ustad Bismillah Khan. National awards like the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, the Padma Vibhushan and India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna, were conferred upon him. On receiving the Bharat Ratna, Bismillah asked people to teach their children music, which is Hindustan's richest tradition. Bismillah is deeply attached to Banaras and the Holy Ganga. Even partition could not separate him from Banaras. Indeed, Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India. I hope my children have understood the life of Bismillah Khan. Thank you all for watching this video.